name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Wednesday of Holy Pascha is a day that we find the Gospels don't tell us a lot about. But the question that the Church presents to us today that I couldn't help but think about is a question that we can't ask ourselves whose story are you living? Whose story are you living? The church today presents to us two different stories. Two different accounts of two different lives. The life and the account of Judas Iscariot and the life and the account of Job when we read his memoirs. And there's a stark contrast between the two. The first, that of Judas, we know that he cuts a deal to betray Christ. And this deal is for 30 pieces of silver. The Gospel of St. Luke, in chapter 22, adds a little bit of detail that Satan entered Judas. And we see him enter Judas again during the Last Supper. But as Wednesday and the plot of the day sets in motion, you could imagine Keda Satan thought he had it all worked out. It was all happening. In Matthew chapter 26, we hear how much Judas actually gained through his negotiation with the chief priests. Verse 14, then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. 30 pieces of silver is all it took to convince Judas. Some of the historians tell us that that is a couple of weeks wage. That's all he sold Christ for. But one of the things that we can't miss in the account of the Gospels is the chief priests did not come seeking Judas. If you hear it again, Judas, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests. They did not seek him. The chief priests did not seek to catch Christ in that manner. To lay hands on Christ in that way. It was Judas that went to them. It was Judas that said to them, What would you give me? Judas was the one that gave them the idea that they could make him an offer and that he would not refuse. And this was the opportunity that he took. And he started looking for a way to betray Christ. And the question comes, how can that be? How could a man who walked with Jesus, who saw and heard everything that Christ performed, who saw the miracles, who performed miracles, who saw the wonders and the glory of God, saw the raising of three people from the dead, saw the raising of Lazarus after four days being in the tomb from the dead, saw the power that Christ have, do this to his master, do this to the one that chose him. And the contrast that we have is the story of Job, a righteous man, a man that was so righteous that he was able to detect when Satan was speaking and when the people around him were speaking. He was so well conversed with God that he accepted everything from God. The Lord gives, the, do the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Everything that befell him, he took with joy, he took with thanksgiving. One of the things that I find difficult difficult to, fa to, to fathom is, a, and, it, and I think it's, it's 
It's the disease and the real plague of the day. It's not Corona. The real plague is how thankful we are to God. If you read the memoirs or if you heard them being read, there's a number of accounts or a number of scenarios where Satan comes disguised as, in the first it was as the shepherd, in the second as um, one of the herdsmen, came disguised to tell Job about a disaster. And you think, you think, you think about it, a serious disaster. That we would see today as a very important news. And Job refuses to listen to him until he's finished his prayer. Job, but this is important. Your fields and your sheep and your herds, your sons have died. No. God comes first in my life. And because God comes first, I will finish my prayer. And then I will begin conversing with this world. God is what is important to me. You see in the conversation between Job and his wife towards the end, Rahma, when she starts giving up, he says to her, have you not considered that last day? Have you not considered that all this world is transient? If we were rich or if we are now poor, have you not considered that all this is going to go and then all that will be left is going to be the eternal life? And this is the question we come back and ask to the other story, the story of Judas. What were you considering? Now the issue that we have is the question of which story are we living? Our Lord is a very intentional storyteller. The church today tells us that story. If you look at the prophecies, they are speaking about the story of God creating that water of baptism, that water through which we will enter into this kingdom that He is purchasing for us with His blood. The first it was the water out of the rock in the wilderness. The second it was the splitting of the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites to pass through, to pass through from the land of death, from imminent death, death at the hands of the Egyptians. To pass through to safety, to the eternal life, where life is abundant and where life does not end, where life is eternal. This is the story that our Christ and our God presents us. It's a story where love has the ultimate power to redeem anything. It is a story where hope can reign because God's victory at the end of time is already assured. It is a story where the miracle of the resurrection will take and will take hold and will grant us that eternal life. But perhaps some of you are like me, where we take things day to day. And today, today, it can be very hard to live into his story and into this story. And so I ask this final question to myself. Whose story are you living? You see, we already know what the story of God is writing. But if we cannot live into the story that God is telling, we might have just entered or been uh, we may have just been entertaining a story from the evil one. Satan had a plan with Job. And his plan was to make him fall, to make him fail, to make him lose that righteousness. Satan had a plan with Judas. And his plan with Judas was to make him betray his master. And Satan has a plan for me and for you. And that plan is to make us lose our salvation. God on the other, plan, on the other hand has a different intention. And God has a different story. That story has eternal life. And that story, in that story you are loved. In that story you are not forsaken. And in that story, 
although it does not ex exclude suffering, it does combat despair by redeeming the suffering. Let us try and live that story that God is writing for us. Although today we see him being betrayed, it's only going to be a few days where we see him triumphant on the cross and triumphant in his resurrection. And it's that triumph that we need to use to motivate ourselves each day, to connect with him, to be thankful to him in everything that he gifts and presents to us in our lives, that we may complete his story, his story of redemption, where we will gain eternal life and glory be to God forever.